Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. But before I get started, every single day on X, I have people DMing me asking me to talk about meme coins. I even see it in the comments section on a lot of these videos. I am not going to talk about meme coins. I only talk about cr cryptocurrencies that I hold myself. If I wouldn't invest in it, I'm not going to talk about it. I have people asking me to talk about Dogcoin and Pepe and Shib. And it's like, listen, I get it. You love meme coins. You want me to hype up your bullshit. I'm just not the person you're looking for to do it. I'm not going to sell out the people that watch my videos. And that's the way I look at it. If you all want to go and invest in meme coins, I leave that up to you. I talk about utility. XRP is for payments. Bitcoin is for speculation, says former U.S. Treasurer Rosie Rios. You know, right now, uh, the speculation, we're at the point where speculation is about to end and utility is about to take over. When Rosie Rios joined Ripple's board and said that the train has left the station, she didn't mean that you were too late to XRP. What she was telling you is that everything is already set in motion. XRP is going to be massive in the future. XRP is going to solve a massive problem all around the world when it comes to moving money. And, you know, speculation is great. And sure, meme coins are great. Some people get rich off of them. But right now, most of these coins are blatant rug pulls. They just want retail to get in, jump in, hoping to get rich just to lose all their money. That's why I don't talk about them on this channel. This comes from Crypto Eddie. Hello, Uphold Inc. Did CEO Simon McLaughlin really make this $10,000 price prediction for XRP? I didn't know exchanges made price predictions. So it looks like the CEO of Uphold said that XRP could surge as high as $10,000. But then she goes on to say this, that three YouTubers were featuring this as their XRP content. And she says, I'll be handing out, go straight to jail cards to three YouTubers. I didn't know she was the crypto police. But you know, if people want to talk about a $10,000 XRP, then so be it. If their listeners want to hear that, then so be it. I said it many times. I don't think $10,000 is off the table for XRP. We don't know. The, all I see right now, what, what's forming around XRP is a massive network, a massive payment network that's set up all around the world, globally, that XRP is going to run on. Then we got to also factor in tokenization as well. That's going to bring a shit ton of value to the XRP ledger. So is $10,000 that unbelievable? Me personally, I don't see it happening in the next two years. But by 2027, 2028, we don't even know what the price of XRP would be by then. It could easily be in the four-digit range. It could be at in five-digit territory. We don't know. So if people want to talk about it, let them talk about it. That's the way I look at it. And Linda P. Jones has talked about that multiple times in the past. She even says that market cap doesn't matter with Ripple's XRP. And I agree with her. I don't think market cap or previous cycles matter at all when you're talking about utility. A cryptocurrency that solves a massive problem all throughout the world. It makes payments faster, cheaper, and secure. And that's what people want. They want real-time payments. Join the movement at standwithcrypto.org. This comes from Brian Armstrong of Coinbase. So if you care about crypto, it's time to prove it. You could join the fight right here. 
and you see there's already over a million crypto advocates and the key vote right now is fit 21 a historic bipartisan crypto bill fit 21 is about to be voted on in the u.s house of representatives this act will foster american innovation and protect consumers by creating a clear regulatory framework for crypto take a look at some fit 21 resources below so if you want to join the movement that's how you can do it i suggest everybody jumps on board with that the financial committee subcommittee on digital assets financial technology and inclusion of the committee on financial services hearing next generation infrastructure tokenization take a listen Today, we're hearing from individuals actively leveraging tokenization to improve and enhance both our capital markets and our banking system. Our witnesses are helping usher in the next age of financial services into the United States, and I'm excited to learn more about the enhancements that they're actively working on, both here and abroad. I hope that we can use this hearing to understand uh, where it makes sense for the consideration of tokenization to be utilized and the necessary regulatory and legal considerations that have to be uh, uh, amended or considered in order to make that more of a reality. It's already happening. Tokenization is already happening all around the world. And it's really going to pick up momentum the second half of this year. It's nice to see that they're getting ready for that. And Lilia Tesler explains tokenization right here. As background, tokenization refers to the process of digitally representing and recording an asset using blockchain technology. For our purposes, how a blockchain works is less important than what a blockchain is. It's simply a digital ledger. Tokenization can be applied to a wide variety of assets, such as securities, bank deposits, gold, food, pharmaceuticals, or real estate. The act of tokenization does not change the essential nature or character of the asset, nor does it create a new asset class. I think that was great because she pretty much said that everything around you is going to be tokenized in the future. Anything of value. She says food, pharmaceuticals. They're going to tokenize everything. I talked about that multiple times. The World Economic Forum talks about tokenizing the water tokenizing the trees the mountains and you know this market it once it gets momentum going it's not going to stop that's why i said year over year we're going to watch the price of these cryptocurrencies rise with tokenization more and more value coming on to these networks rep hill speaking about a potential global reserve currency that could be needed to keep track of everything within the shared ledger take a listen to this and if we if we have so let's just sort of think about this you've got a bunch of different tokenization systems uh and and you want ideally you do want different countries uh you, you want global commerce wouldn't you need a a central bank uh, sort of a one one central not necessarily, well, sort of like a reserve currency where everybody could exchange their, their tokenized uh, assets and, and trade them. Wouldn't that require one central bank currency to sort of settle all that out? That it would take a neutral bridge currency like XRP, a currency that everyone could agree on. And Ripple already has the rails set up for this all around the world. One that everybody recognizes and respects? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the benefits of tokenization depend on there being a settlement asset, right? right. And, you know, some people say that stable coins should be a settlement asset. I think that is a, a terrible reason um, for because of all the fragilities of stable coins that I've testified before. Um, Take notice, she doesn't agree on a stable coin being used to move tokenized value. About before. So I really think that the, the settlement asset has to be some kind of central bank money, ultimately. All right. And if you want that on the ledger, it's probably going to have to take 
the, the form of some kind of central bank digital currency. Now, this doesn't have to be a retail product, and I want to emphasize that because I'm not sure where I sit on you know, retail central bank digital currencies, but a wholesale, the plumbing, yeah. central bank digital currencies, something like that would be needed um, for, uh, as but, a settlement. But obviously, if our own, if the Federal Reserve Bank is, is not allowed to operate in that space, it's going to be a central bank, some other central bank. It won't be ours. It'll, it'll be... You know. Take notice, he said, it won't be the Federal Reserve. It'll be a different central bank. What if Ripple becomes the central bank? What if Ripple was to replace the Fed? Look what's going on right now with the end the Fed movement that's going on in Washington. And even a CBDC, she doesn't want a retail CBDC because she doesn't know where she sits with that right now. What it is is she's worried about government control over us stopping our transactions shutting off our money and it doesn't matter because ripple already has the rail set up all around the world for this to work and utilize the neutral bridge currency xrp to move tokenized value that's what i see coming next jim kramer says it's time to clean up the rogue crypto coins they make a mockery of the process after interviewing SEC Chair Gary Gensler. What Jim Cramer is actually saying is we need to have clear crypto regulations. And I see the same thing. That's what needs to be put in place. Once we get regulations, that's when we will get the flip of the switch moment. Wow, $51,300 in transactions in just five days. DPay is an innovative, Credit card solution promises to revolutionize digital transactions, offering seamless integration with the XRP ledger and opening new horizons for decentralized finance. DPay token is still under a penny, and I think this is going to continue to grow year over year, adding more and more value. But let's go back to the beginning of this video really quick. I don't know what happened with Crypto Eddie. It's like she's becoming the Crypto Karen all of a sudden. She wants to make sure that everybody agrees with her and they don't think for themselves. You know, Smoke, he puts out great content on X. I use it in a lot of my videos. Same thing with Mr. Man and others because they stick to the facts. And if you stick to the facts, it shouldn't matter. Really, and when we talk about a $10,000 XRP, if you look at the facts around XRP right now, who is to say that XRP cannot reach five digits at some point in the future? I just talked about how XRP could be used to move tokenized value, how Ripple could become a central bank, possibly even replace the Fed at some point in the future. Nobody really knows. I think Ripple is definitely on track to become a bank, though. And, you know, I'm not going to say that $10,000 is off the table for XRP ever. I think short term, next year or two, I think we'll be looking at a three-digit XRP. And that's my honest opinion on it. Based on all the facts that I've been sharing with all of you over the course of the last two years. But until it all happens... Stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.